Francis Redman coming to you live from Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony. Let's clap. Austin, Texas. Are you guys ready to do this fucking shit tonight or what? <laughs> Jesus, you doing a slow intro. I got D Madness up here whoop whooping continuously doing a 15 minute version of the song Colorblind. Jesus fucking Christ. Are you guys ready to have a great fucking night tonight or what? We are live in Austin, Texas for the number one live podcast in the world, Kill Tony, brought to you by the Yellow Rose and the Red Rose, the two best goddamn strip clubs in the world. Uh, and uh, how about a hand for the band, everybody? That is the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band. No doubt about it. That's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums, Matt Muling on guitar, and one of my favorite humans in the world, the great D Madness on the bass, everybody. Blue Norther Hard Seltzer, also a great sponsor here. I mentioned Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey and CM Smokehouse at uh, Bolden Acres, one of the best barbecue places in the city. We are uh, excited to be here. We've been having a lot of fun lately, and uh, I am pumped. But before we start tonight's episode, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. The 2022 tour starts now. I'm doing stand-up comedy by myself in Las Vegas, Nevada at the end of January. Buffalo, February 4th and 5th. Holland, Michigan, the 25th of February. Grand Rapids, the 26th. Raleigh, North Carolina, March 11th and 12th. Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I'm back with you again. It's been a while. April 8th and 9th. Miami, Florida, April 21st to the 23rd. Phoenix, uh, May 5th to the 7th. Salt Lake City, Wise Guys, one of the best clubs in the world, May 20th and 21st. And uh, more dates are being added regularly. Get tickets at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Hey, y'all. 2022 is going to be a big year for a lot of businesses, but some industries are projected to grow even more this year, like uh, pet services, uh, fitness uh, industry, digital events and conferences, home improvement. All of this is growing like crazy. And if you work for or own a business in one of these growing industries or a wide range of other industries, you probably need to hire ASAP. There's only one place to go. You know it. It's ZipRecruiter. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. Red Bam? I love ZipRecruiter. You know, I've used it in the past for my girlfriend. She was looking for a job, and she found one almost immediately. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 ratings. ZipRecruiter's technology is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Wee! And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T O-N-Y, ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Are you guys ready to start tonight's episode or what? <laughs> every single week, I have one or two of the funniest comedians in the world on this show. And every once in a while, we have some extra goddamn fun. I can say, all ego aside, without a doubt, these are two of the greatest rappers in the world. Our guests tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia. Oh, shit. We're going to the deep waters tonight. That's right. For any cool kids in the room, you might know what the fuck is happening here. Danny Brown, veteran of the show. One of the... One of the most uh, controversial characters in the history of the show, Danny Brown. Goddamn right. I mean, come on. You never know what one, version one, of him one. you're going to get. And this is our first time having... How about a big welcome for JPEG Mafia here at Kill Tony. Bottle of champagne. It's Martin Luther King Day. Total coincidence. Total coincidence that these are my guests on Martin Luther King Day. But I see what you're doing. You know what's up. I didn't know I was a pawn in your chess game right That's now. That's it. That's called strategic uncancelization right God there. That's what I call that. 
God damn. That is a perfect accident. I love it. Welcome to the show. We're going to watch a bunch of stand-up comedians try their hardest. Maybe it's their first time. Maybe they're local veterans. I pull one of their names out of the bucket. That means they get 60 seconds of uninterrupted stage time. You all know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else they're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. And it's, it's loud and annoying and it interrupts their set. So we, that's how we keep them to a certain strategic time. And then I interview them after that minute of stand-up comedy and we figure out more about them. Maybe something interesting. You guys ready to start tonight's episode, huh? I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of first timers here. Maybe your people. T- maybe maybe they're tired. Maybe you guys drove from Beaumont or something to uh, to be here tonight. Are you guys ready to start tonight's fucking episode? Here we go. Before I pull a random stranger out of this bucket, we're gonna get one of our regulars up here. He was made a regular here just a few months ago in Austin, Texas, and just started headlining his own shows all around the country. Fresh off of another sold-out show in Dallas, Texas. This is our very own Hans Kim. Hey, I went to the library today, but it was closed for Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, which I think is a rude way to celebrate that holiday. They're like, hey, remember this great man? Yeah, no knowledge on his birthday. (laughs) Hooray. I think it should be like, hey, sorry we're closed, but uh, Hitler was an asshole. (laughs) Um, I I was walking up the escalator, and this guy was just standing there, and he was like, dude, why do people walk up escalators? That doesn't make any sense because... But then I didn't hear that rest of the sentence because I was covering so much distance. I left him in the dust. Oh my God. Thank you. Wow, Hans Kim, always starting off the show. He makes it look tremendously easy. Let there be no doubt. That is making it look easy. I love that escalator joke. Thank you, Tony. You are such a little star. Look at you, <laughs> my, my little Asian star. Hans. Uh, that was great. The MLK joke, great. Made everybody laugh. How's life going for you? It's been going great. I sold out two shows in Dallas, Texas. Wow, look at that. Yeah! For those of you that don't know, that's a really, really big deal. Uh, you are, we watched you hit this new level recently of, uh, of headlining your own shows, yeah. and I told you that if you stopped doing all the shitty open mics every night that you were doing that I would repost when your shows are. And so fans of Kill Tony see that you're playing somewhere and they buy tickets. Yeah, it's an amazing system. Who... <laughs> and again, I, sometimes I forget, who was it again that changed your life in this way? Mr. Tony Hinchcliffe. That's right, thank you. I, sometimes I just, sometimes I have to make sure, just in case he ever makes a fucking video about me or something that... Uh, <laughs> That I have you on the record saying that I changed your life. Uh, you guys, uh, what do you guys think of Hans? You guys are fans of the Wu-Tang Clan, am I correct? So, uh, <laughs> I just think you're trying to make up for Pang Dang. Well, Jesus, Danny. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, way to really fucking be... No, I'm talking shit, I'm talking shit. Really talking shit. on the nose a little bit. Uh, I mean, we all know that I'm definitely flexing on what, the career that Pang Dang could have had. <laughs> But I, I mean, uh, that's just... Fuck Pang Dang! No, it's not even fuck <laughs> Pang Dang. He already fucked himself. Uh, we don't need to fuck him at all. But, you know, Hans is a good guy. He's much, much funnier than... Uh, <laughs> Asians are I was going to say Margaret Cho, but I'll say Pang Dang again, <laughs> sure. But. I was at Dallas Comedy did, Club, and I saw Pang Dang. High. Wait, hold on. Go ahead. I was Some, at sometimes the, Danny just know, I'm says sorry, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. one of the things that he does famously on the show. If you don't believe me, <laughs> go back check out the Detroit episode with Danny Brown. Uh, for those of you diehard fans, that was Adderall and cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my fault. 
Look you're at my really point. spilling the beans here tonight. Very I think honest. Everybody, if you watch that shit and if you do that shit, you would know. I think Hans's autism is rubbing off on you a little bit here. You're just. <laughs> Hans, or maybe his Aspergers. Hans does. <laughs> Hans does drugs. What drugs have you done recently, Hans? I just did a lot of weed with uh, Danny Brown. Oh. Nigga, that don't count. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just smoked backstage. Yeah, like we did coke in a fucking truck stop. <laughs> I'm pretty high. <laughs> Absolutely. Danny Brown, famous for his weed. Chappelle uh, famously has talked I about know, that before. I know, he act like I gave him crack in the motherfucker or some shit. It was like, nigga, I just smoked one blunt with you. God damn, we keep talking about this same blunt for five years. It's the most famous blunt I ever smoked in my life. Like, I wish I didn't smoke with him at this point in my life. Hans, what else is going on? Anything else interesting? <laughs> Um, I, uh, I did the good show in, uh, in Dallas. Uh, I did a little, um, a uh, little Kill Tony last Monday. I mean, a big Kill Tony last Monday. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? I'm not was, asking you if you did last week's show. I was just going to say, like, after, after the show, I got a little HJ, um. A hand job? Yeah. He keep getting hand. How many you hand jobs you get at the show? This is like a normal thing. It's like a reoccurrence at this point, right? Who gave you the hand job last week? A beautiful female comedian. Wow. Look at that. Hell yeah. Fresh hand. Probably never writes a joke. So uh, <laughs> probably a real soft hand. You'll see. I'll pull one out of the bucket later. You'll see what I'm talking I'm kidding, ladies. Uh, where was the hand job given? At the house that I'm squatting in. Oh. You're still staying at a friend's house. They have yeah. you house-sitting for them. Yeah. And uh, was it in the bedroom? Was it in the kitchen? What kind of hand job was this exactly? It was a, uh, it was a uh, after fingering hand job. I think the fingering. <laughs> wow. How does this even happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. I think people like uh, my jokes sometimes. It's funny. Hans is I'm a definitely. smart guy. Do you, do you just pull your dick out and be like, jack it off? I mean, how do you get into a, a just, I got jacked off scenario? I, like, I, I'm trying to understand that. It is true. The hand job is something that uh, Danny Brown never has to deal with. <laughs> I mean, in, in middle school? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he skipped middle school. That's what happened. Is he went straight to college after you know, eighth yeah. grade. <laughs> and fucking his sex life stayed there. Well, I did some fingering, Tony. <laughs> you would be proud. I'm selling out shows and getting hand jobs. Uh, <laughs> Fucking incredible. Hans Kim uh, Twill working on his master degree. <laughs> uh, working on the fundamentals. <laughs> I got my doctorate of receiving hand jobs yes. and uh, lubrication or no lubrication on this hand job? There was no lubrication necessary. Wow. Why, hey, hold on, hold on a second. Why was there no lubrication necessary? Were you in the shower perhaps or something? Like, what are you talking about exactly? It was a combination of sweat and semen. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> How is hold on, hold on, Mario, get out of here. How was there already semen on your dick while you were getting the hand job? The million dollar question. Am I correct? Am I missing something here? Is oh, it, I know. Is, is his dick just always covered in semen? Is it like a like a soup dumpling or something like that? Is it? I'm just leaky. I. Uh... Oh, wow. 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 That motherfucker was hard when a, he stepped in the I dope. Just, I just watched a girl puke in her mouth a little bit just then, just to <laughs> let you know. It doesn't happen that often. It gets uh, everywhere. What do you mean, leaky? What's just, going on over here? I know what he mean. What, what does he mean? I get turned on. He's got a lot of pre-cum. He's like, yeah. He, okay. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Redband, for the uh, actual answer to the question during a comedy show. <laughs> you really knocked that one out of the Well, park. enough for a hand job. That's a gross amount of pre cum. It like, really <laughs> is. Yeah. It really is. I might have a problem. Oh, shit. You might have like, chlamydia, is what you might have. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. If there's that much fucking oily substance coming out of the tip of your penis. When's the last time you got checked for STDs? Uh, like three months ago. Oh, yeah. Well, luckily, you can't get shit from a hand job. So <laughs> we might be in the clear. We might get a little fucking sharpie on your wiener or something but that's about it. I don't know why I said that that's what I get on my hands so unless I'm giving you the hand job you're gonna be in the <laughs> <laughs> I love it uh, Hans 
Another great set, an extremely fun interview. For some reason, there seems to be nothing funnier than your unlubricated hand jobs. <laughs> there he goes, your first comedian of the night, Hans Kim. Thank you. All right. This is the bar where I reach into the bucket, and we meet a complete stranger together all at once. And your first comedian tonight goes by the name of Bowie. 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 B A W I I I. You don't go trap with me. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Bowie. B A W I I I. Here he is, everybody. One more time for Bowie, everybody. What up, y'all? Yeah. Uh, I think um, we don't appreciate how blasé hood niggas begin nowadays. Um, the fact that uh, I know that word should tell white people something. <laughs> 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 Um, so I got a story to tell y'all. I was um, I was going to the corner store uh, one day. That's in the hood, white people. Again, um, it's a gas station. <laughs> it's like a gas station corner store, and there was a dude parked at the pump. And his window, he had a back. His back window was cracked, like it was still glass on the back area. And so I went up to him real slow, and I was like, "Yo, you good?" He was like. Yeah, man, they just got through busting at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> he understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, busting, and he was like, yeah, bro, like, pew, pew, you know? I was like... Yeah. All right, Bowie. Ah. Literally only killing with Danny Brown. Yes! <laughs> Which hey, means... Red Band, get his information for Thursdays, man. Pull it up, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man. I love it. Bowie, how long you been doing stand-up? About a week now. Okay. What made you start last week? How about a hand for him? He's been doing it a week. Had the courage to sign up here. Never would have guessed that he'd, a week later he'd be bombing in front of two of his favorite rappers well, in the hey. world. I'm fucking with, he ain't bomb. I'm fucking with Bowie. I got it. Y'all niggas didn't. Why you dressed like a school bus? Oh. Me? Oh, are you trying this right now? Yeah, oh, right is that now. what's oh, happening? That's what's happening. You See, really, I tried to help that? you. Yeah. I tried to help you. After but all that, you're I trying to, this? Yes, sir. I'm talking to fucking Erica Badu with a beard right now. <laughs> <and you're> fucking. <laughs> uh, fucking you, hey, you do look breeds. like gay Woody from Toy Story. Wait, what? I you, didn't hear what you said. I said, of course, you do look like gay Woody from Toy Story. Uh, you can't, you can't, yeah, okay, I gotcha. Yes, very good. I'm not even going to acknowledge that. That's a joke <laughs> that we make all the time. Are you a fan of comedy? Uh, yeah, I am, yeah. Okay, so what made you start a week ago? Um, I came here on a, a vacation. I was always a fan. I knew the show was in town, so I just dropped my name. Right. And then I, I didn't get on, so I did uh, Shakespeare's Down the Street, and I loved it. So. Right, absolutely. So you started at Shakespeare. Was that on a Monday? Yeah. So you saw Kill Tony, didn't get pulled, went to Shakespeare's, and that was a week ago, and here you are this week. Pulled first out of the bucket. Yeah. Pretty Absolutely much. incredible. Perfect. How old are you? 24. 24. What do you do for work? Uh, I mix and master most of the time, but I do real estate. Though. Mix and match most of the time? Mix and master. Like I mix and master? That's rap music oh, term. Okay. Yeah, it's audio. I do the same thing. You ever killed anybody? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been waiting yes! to ask you that shit. Oh, hell yeah. Why are you trying to get me to snitch on stage, bro? I I'm not trying to get you to snitch that. on stage. I just want to know. I just, <laughs> I just want to validate my own thoughts, basically. Uh, okay, cool, Because cool. <laughs> people that sit around and mix and master are psychos. <laughs> yeah, yeah like no. I'm, I'm a maniac. I definitely mix and master, so I understand. It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, how long you been mixing and mastering for? Uh, since I was about fourteen. Uh, wow! Yeah. You ever do anything Fire. that we could with it uh, that you know made an impact or anything? Um, like I did that? a remix of "See You Again" by uh, Wiz Khalifa and them. And, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you should okay. Right. 
<laughs> this, I mean, this has to be so surreal for you right now, right? Just a little bit. Danny yeah. Brown's laughing at you. don't give a fuck I, about Danny Brown. He just said he had some shit with Wiz Khalifa, man. This is two different no, no, worlds. No, no, I didn't me. work with him. I remixed one of his tracks. It went viral. Like you just remixed it yourself. It yeah, went viral. Of house, yeah. <laughs> Independent of Wiz Khalifa. Uh, it had Wiz Khalifa and uh, Charlie Puth. White people know how to say his name. Okay. What's more viral, your thing with Wiz Khalifa or Hans Kim's penis? Hans Kim's penis, definitely. Anyway, uh, Bowie, so you're mixing and mastering. Is that really how you make money, though? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's okay. really a profitable business. It is. It's huh? really not. Right. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> I, had a feeling. I don't even know why you said that shit. Yeah, I know. Sometimes he just says sure. things. It's all good. <laughs> Bowie, so you make your money with that. You have a girlfriend? Uh, I got a wife, yeah. Okay. How long have you been married? Uh, we've been together eight years. Um, eight years? And you're 24? So yeah, you married I'm at 24? Ma- no, no, no. Yeah, I'm married now. Yeah. How did that happen? You did? You got married you at 24? You met at 16? Yeah. No, yeah, we met. She's from the Caribbean. I met my bitch at 16. I wasn't married at that bitch. Crazy. Yeah, we met in the Caribbean. She, she's, uh, I was born there, by the way. Have so, you ever had sex with anybody I, else? Nah. That's well, God damn. Yeah. That yeah, was man. my next question. Have uh, you with had sex her? with no. anybody else? <laughs> no, You've only had her. sex with her? With the one pussy, yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> damn. <laughs> wow. I didn't even mean it like that, bro. My bad. <laughs> damn. I did. Yeah, that's cool. This is one of the saddest lesbian relationships I've ever heard of in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> Eight yeah. years, nothing else, and she's never been with anybody else either, right, Bowie? Uh, so far as I know. Fuck yeah. what? <laughs> you sure about that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm dumb, <laughs> Bowie, uh, tell us, uh, you originally from Texas, born and raised? Um, no. Nope. Where are you no. from? Saint Martin. What? Saint Martin. Okay. It's an island in the Caribbean. Okay. Oh, like Tim Duncan. Is that where Tim Duncan's from? I don't fucking know. Nope, Duncan. definitely not. This is a bad trivia with Danny Brown. Uh, <laughs> no, he's from the no, first. I mean, I mean, that's where Dunkin' Donuts started. <laughs> no, I got it confused. No, when I hear shit like that, that's <laughs> all I think about is Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was from the Virgin. I Google it. No, no Tim phones. Duncan's from Trinidad and Tobago or oh, something right. like that. It's the same shit. Trust me, it is. It is all the. I, exact I'm kind of mad trip. at it. Oh, we said we said enough African countries to ignite the sound effects, everybody. Yeah. All right, this is on Martin Luther King Day. This is like mind. a solar eclipse of some kind that I'm seeing right now. This is just incredible. This looks like my worst nightmare at the uh, middle of the night, walking home. Am I right, people? All right. All right. <laughs> it's a long walk to Rainy Street from here. Uh, look out! <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Bowie, what's something crazy about your childhood? How'd you get to America? What the fuck happened here? Uh, boat. <laughs> All right. Was it really? No, no, no. no. Okay. Uh, my dad um, left me when I was uh, a baby. Sad story. Um, and then he brought me here again only to leave me again. So. Wow. Damn. Yeah, I got that is... Tired, yeah. <laughs> that is an incredible tale. He brought you here and abandoned you here. Again. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole so different level that. of black fathering yeah, that we, I've never we, we, heard of before. That's a super. It's yeah. one thing to have a kid here and then leave him and go somewhere else, but to bring a kid from another country and then leave him again. He dropped you off at like the fire department or something. Pretty much. No, 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 no. He didn't do that. No. no. You yeah. had like an aunt. He can't climb a ladder. So. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of heavy set. <laughs> All right, Bowie. I love it. <laughs> Mixing, mastering. You're 24. You've been married for eight years. I mean, is it hard out there? Eight years? Are you, are you in love with this girl? What makes yeah, her so special? She's cool. What's your um, favorite thing about her? She just knows where I'm at, where my head's at most of the time. Okay. So. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. Make sure she doesn't get Is pawns. she here with you right now? No. Or. Right. Right, but she lives here in Austin with you now? No. 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 Where do you guys live now? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. So you're just visiting? <laughs> yeah. Truly, truly one of the worst cities in the United States of America, by the way. I don't know if you guys truly, travel truly. a lot. I mean, it is just a garbage pile. Yeah. The airport sucks. The hotels suck. The restaurants suck. They got good the, cheese curds. The, the audience is okay because they can't believe that you came to their town. <laughs> But literally everything about Milwaukee sucks. The Come weather on, sucks. They have the you... wind of Chicago. 
and none of the fucking pizza. I'm what about the What about the mall? The mall. The mall. I mean, no, you Mr. Trash <laughs> Hold on a the second, everybody. Trash. We're in chaos That's racist. mode right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you do Wisconsin like that. Uh, no. Me being a motherfucker born and raised in the Midwest, they do have great cheese. <laughs> And I know and y'all thinking like, yeah. oh, cheese, oh, cheese, like, cheese. Like, no, you can go to, like, some fireplaces, and they'll whip, like, some weird cheese out. you be like, what is this cheese? Fried curds. And then you be like, damn, then you, you just hit it, and you eat the cheese. you be like, damn, this cheese tastes like I got steak on it. <laughs> you know what it I'm really saying? does. It really does. Like, I recognize this, this, more, like, Green Bay and Madison for that. Uh, I'm saying. Yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, it was Madison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Madison, by the way, is shockingly a pretty cool city. They make handmade potato chips. Uh huh. See, you don't know, see. Yeah, I, I do believe Tim Duncan's. And from you there. can do like. Uh, Bowie, congratulations! You got pulled out of the bucket. Thank you, man. Uh, here, take a joke book. Take one of those. Congratulations! You got a small joke book. Bowie, look at that. Who knows? One day. He could be mixing and mastering. With I got the jokes. He was saying some nigga guys. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was thinking it. I wasn't going to say it saying, out loud. Man. I know what you're saying. All right. Your next comedian goes by the name 60 Seconds Uninterrupted goes to Audrey Scalise. <laughs> Audrey Scalise. 60 Seconds Uninterrupted with no laughter Ooh. into the microphone or anything like it. Audrey Scalise. This fucking guy. How about a hand for Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia joining us in our crazy world here tonight? Here comes Audrey. She came from the upstairs. This could be a legit audience member, could be a first timer. Anything can happen. One more time for Audrey, everybody. Come on. So one time I was sexually assaulted by a minor. I'm worried that technically that means I'm a pedophile. (laughs) The thing about body dysmorphia is you hope that you're the actually hot, but you think you're ugly kind, not the you're ugly and you know it kind. I live in the Northeast and all, I'm in my 20s. All my friends are queer. Uh, I'm gonna have to come out to them as straight at some point. <laughs> like, I know you eat my pussy, but I'm actually attracted to men. <laughs> I just hope they accept me for who I am and don't treat me any differently. Wow, Audrey Scalise. Welcome. Hi. Welcome, Audrey. Uh, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? This is my first time ever. Wow, first time ever. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. A lot of the uh, audience members that buy tickets sit on the giant wraparound uh, balcony, and uh, when I saw that you came down the stairs, I had a feeling that that could be one of these situations. So wh- where are you from? I'm from western Massachusetts, from a town called Lesbianville. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Western Massachusetts. What are we talking about exactly? Are we talking about like uh It's it's called Northampton, but if you look up Lesbianville online, like it says Northampton. Is that true? Are there that many lesbians there? Yeah, they're all there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. That must be where the last comedian just went off to. Uh <laughs> too easy uh audrey so we're talking about this here how old are you uh 23 23 years old uh okay you said you were sexually assaulted by a minor that's a joke because that came around it was true yeah wait what happened uh i think i was 18 and this guy was 17 and he just started fingering me when i was drunk oh okay but okay. It, it's it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of But It's Cool. See, uh, I'm setting up. You that's the me? part. That's the part that CNN will edit out of their clip that they put out tomorrow. <laughs> People in Texas will. Keep the breaking news. People in Texas laughing at jokes. 
So, Audrey, let's talk about it. Is stand-up something you've always wanted to do? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, my ex-boyfriend showed me this show. He might be watching. Oh, yeah. shit. So this is one of those revenge sets. Yes, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> We've seen this before, ladies and gentlemen. The boyfriend listens to the show every Monday. The girl says, what's that? They sit down. They watch for a second. They don't really like it, but they know how much he loves it. And so they form their whole life around uh, trying to make him sad. I'd be pissed. It is the Kill Tony 10-star bitch trick. That, uh, I'm it's just like saying. the five-point palm exploding heart technique from Kill Bill, but it's for Kill Tony. It's just they come on and have a good 60-second set. You know what would really piss him off is if you blew our two guests up here tonight. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That doesn't happen here. Hand jobs only on this show. Only with Hans Kim. It only happened with Hans Kim. Man. Hell yeah. Uh, so, Audrey, how, how recently did you get out of that relationship? That was years ago. Years ago? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's kind of crazy. Right. So, years ago, you have a new boyfriend now, or are you single? I do have a new boyfriend. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also a straight white male. Yes. So no, yes, the best. God bad. damn! Absolutely. Yeah. Another straight white male. Yeah. I'm uh, really brave. What does he do for work? What? Uh... The boyfriend? Yep. He's a bartender. Okay, what do you do for work? Um, I'm a tattoo artist. Whoa. Yeah, out, out of my home, it's kind of... I don't know funky. about you. I saw your hand shaking with those jokes in your hand. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the last thing I'm going to fucking... I don't know if you guys saw that, but she's like... <laughs> and no thank you. I will go anywhere else for my tattoo. I'd rather have Danny Brown on Adderall giving me tattoos than your fucking... You are Michael J. Foxy over there. This shit's fucking... You're shakier than a Miami apartment building. This shit's out of control. But I get it. Your first time, trust me. I totally understand. How long have you been planning this? Uh, my boyfriend planned the trip uh, oh, okay. a few months ago. And your I was boyfriend's like, here with you right now. He is. Did he yeah. sign up? No. No, look He's at you. He's not that funny. Wow. Damn. Can I talk my shit? I'm not going to lie. This is like the worst revenge shit to do to motherfucker. Like, if a nigga, like, put you up on Kill Tony, and then now nah, I see my bitch on stage doing jokes about the shit. Like, yep. nigga, I'll be high. And doing really good, and it's her first time. Like, I'll this is high. a real fuck you. And he just found out that she's, j the guy's not even funny, which means he must be banging those guts out. You know what I mean? <laughs> If he doesn't have a personality, he's got to be good in the bedroom. Maybe the guy I'm didn't so even put sad. that together, but I did, and now I said it, so now he did. So, so this, I don't is, know. this is really, you're really nuclear bombing him. Did he I know, that's what I'm saying. I don't know did if he, that was her intent. Me, did he break, did he break you your got heart? It. You did it. You won. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> did he break your heart at any point, or... Uh, no, I think I broke his heart. Wow, and you're just you just continue really? to drive the knife in. I mean, this is incredible. Yeah. This is like the new Scream movie or something like that. You're just stabbing this poor guy. Uh, what? Why do you think you're so ruthless with your ex-boyfriend? Why? Where does this come from? Are you just a uh, just a normal female? <laughs> if you only knew what I was. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I've realized recently that I'm definitely a total bitch. Um, so I'm you kinda, are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What other bitchy things do you do, like, in normal life? Like, do you uh, complain at restaurants and stuff? Like, she's not, she really wouldn't be, like, a Karen. I think this is more of, like, a, like one like of the, like a, like, a bad baby type or something like that. I'm just really spiteful. Uh, I, like... Literally sat down on the airplane on the way here, uh -huh. and the seatbelt was too tight. I was mm. like, "Was the bitch skinnier than me that sat here?" Right. Like. Right. Yep. I literally had that thought. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yep. Uh, JPEG Mafia. Guy. Have you ever stalked one of your exes on Instagram before? Yeah. Have you ever done it on Venmo before? <laughs> Whoa. This is see the truth. Her first leave time alone, ever alone, on stage. All right, you got it, you got it, you got it. Her first time ever on stage. She's up here just fucking crushing it. This is incredible, Audrey. Wow. 
This Red Band great, Thursdays. This is Sign a, her up. A great episode for you. A horrible episode for your ex-boyfriend. I mean, we, def- we definitely just lost a listener. There's no question. He won't be able to continue this after this. Kiltonio, you mean the show that Audrey broke my heart on? He would say that, yeah. Wow. Horrible. Incredible. Uh, wow. Audrey, congratulations. I mean, your first time ever on stage. You're just visiting here. You handled the interview great. The, the written jokes went really good, especially for someone's first time. So congratulations. Go have fun. Enjoy the rest of your trip here in Austin, Texas. There she goes. Look out, everybody. She might get mad at you for something. She's walking the long walk back to obscurity. All right, I pulled another. You guys having fun out there? All right, good. Make some noise for your next comedian, Chad J, everyone. Here we go. Ooh. Come on, one more time for Chad J, everybody. How y'all doing? Oh, shit. Oh, man. I'm living with a guy for the first time again in like six years. That's weird. You know what I mean? He's an alcoholic from Arkansas, too, so it's like living with a racist Alexa machine who calls me gay for everything that I do. You know, you cross your legs and you hear something in the corner go, gay. He was having a hard time sleeping when he moved in, so I bought him a white power noise machine. Which is fucked up for me, because now, through the wall in my room, I have to hear anti-Semitic comments all night. It's like our house is haunted by a racist ghost. (laughs) Oh, man, no. Uh, He's a great dude, but uh, we we have a hard time every once in a while getting along, because... like the water bill came last week, and uh, it's a tough conversation you have to have with another grown man when you go, you see here under uh, updated usages, your roommate's definitely jerking off in your shower. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Fuck yeah, Chad J. All right, let's talk about it, Chad, because this, this is a ruthless question I'm about to ask you <laughs> after two first-timers uh, performed here. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Just about six months. Six months, everybody. Yeah. D Madness literally leaving the show. <laughs> oh, shit. He's so disappointed in you, Chad. Oh, man. He's going, he's, he's going to get a tattoo from Audrey, uh, the last comedian. <laughs> literally the only guy that would get a tattoo. He'll never see it. Well, That's there pl- you go, Chad. That's, That's what the fucking punchline means, you idiot. You fucking dork. Jesus Christ. No shit. Why else would he be the one that got the tattoo? Wouldn't it be funny if Matt went pee? I wouldn't say he's going to get a tattoo from the girl. You fucking fuck. You silly fucking goose. You did a good job hosting uh, CNN's uh, New Year's Eve, by the way. I know. I, I, I don't know the gay guy's name, but you are that gay guy from that show. Oh, yeah. Andy something. Yeah, Andy. Cohen. Something from, yeah, Cohen. from Bravo. <laughs> That's, which is the only time you'll ever hear that word. Uh, Anderson's bottom. I love it. You do. You look like the third Cuomo brother. <laughs> I love it. Let's talk about it, though, Chad. You've been doing it six months. You live here in Texas. Yep. You just moved here recently? Yeah. From yeah, where? yeah. Uh, well, I was living in Brooklyn, but I went back to California for a little bit, and I was like, fuck this shit. What part of California? Oakland. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, <laughs> now you're here. How long have you been here? Uh, just, just about six months. And what do you do for work? I, I'm a construction worker. Really? Build houses, yeah. You don't seem very confident in that. <laughs> Ma'am, rest in peace, Bob Saget. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say right then at that very moment. After he said construction worker, I'm like, Bob Saget, totally. <laughs> rest in peace, Bob Saget. Without a doubt, why couldn't it have been Chad J? I mean, uh, he's right here in front of us. Dressed That's like... All I was- the boss of all second base umpires or something like that. This is quite incredible. Chat, so you're here, you've been doing it six months. Do you love stand-up comedy? Yeah, for for like forever. I mean, it's it's always been like something that uh that, that I followed and really got into and uh this last year it was just like, you know, I, I everybody had the time to like 
free up and, and figure out, you know, what life looked like again, you know, it was fucking crazy. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is what I wanted That's to do. That's the most boring answer you ever could have given, Chad. I mean, it's exhausting talking with you. I can't believe you think you're cut out for show business. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Chad. These are all jokes. I, I roast people. That's all good. Last thing I need is you fucking killing yourself, Chad. Uh, so let's talk about it. What do you do for fun? How old are you, Chad? 35. 35. So what are you doing for fun? Man, Listening uh, to Howard Stern on fucking serious FM. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You answer other people's questions. What the fuck? That's my Tourette's, I'm sorry. You're trying to save this guy's life right now. Chad, what do you do for fun? Uh, well, I, I build cars as a hobby. Build cars. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hot rods and shit. What was that, man? That's my... That's my. Uh, that's I don't. I don't when, build dogs. When I. Oh yeah, that's that's me making that noise. <laughs> what was that? He thought he was just about to get away with that shit. Cause he always be going off a of motherfuckers, man. Hold up, man. What was that shit he just did, man? Look at the. <laughs> <laughs> You did get me. I was a. Uh, I was actually. It wasn't supposed to be a car. I was like doing like a home that improvement, was like that a was Tim nasty. Allen, like rah, rah, build cars. Rah, rah. I think that was like some sex sounds. Like I just told him, man. But like, I did. I split the difference between Tim Allen and an actual breaking down car. <laughs> You're right, and you spotted it, and you called me out on it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Chad, let's keep it on Chad here. So. Uh, for fun, you build cars. Like, what do you do for, like, fun fun, though? Where, do, where can we see you get loose? Like, what do you do? I love... Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a shameless plug, but I love going to Latchkey on uh, Tuesdays and doing karaoke. Are I you love serious? A good karaoke really? I've never, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen you there. I hang out there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay, that was weird. So what weird do you laugh, sing? Chad. What, what happened? What do you sing at karaoke? Look. Oh, man. Uh, I get into the classics. I actually, like, this last week, uh, I did uh, nothing but a G thing, which is pretty fucking dope. That Run it! Come on, man! Y'all got it? Come on, let's do it. You guys got nothing but a G thing. Chad J, I I cannot imagine how bad this is about to go. I mean, if this goes good, I will literally get a G thing. My phone's locked up. I don't have the lyrics. But let's do I it. got you. I hold you down on the. Oh, I, I got you on the okay. backgrounds. Come Danny on, run I'll back you up. This is a pretty big opportunity for you, Chad. Thing, this baby. is literally let's more street cred than you've acquired go. in 35 do, 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 years. Do, 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 do. Damn. Oh shit! We're about to hear the whitest version of this song yeah. ever. Come on, let's go. One, two. Three into the foe. Snoop Doggy Doggy Dr. Dre is at, is at the doubt. Ready to make an entrance, so back on up. Cause you know I'm about to rip shit up. Give me the microphone first so I can bust like a the bubble. bubble. Confident and long beats together. Now you in know you're in trouble. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. baby. Too loped out. Going Go crazy. crazy. Death Row is the label that pays me. Unfatable, so please don't try, try to, to fade this. this. So back to the lecture at hand. hand. Perfection is perfection, so I'ma let them understand. understand from a true dreams perspective. Four o'clock in the clip, you have to have contraceptive. Cause you know she could be earning a man, learning a man, and at the same time burning a man, but I ain't with that shit, Lieutenant. Oh fuck. I, I got keep it. Go- keep going. Get it up, now get it up. Get it up. Wow. Wow, that is incredible. Ain't nothing like a G thing, baby. Two all right, dope all boys, right. niggas going crazy. That's it. That's it. That's it. Last thing I need is Danny Brown doing a 15-minute version of this song right now. <laughs> I just know it was about just to so that he can burn off some energy. You see how hype I got? I ain't gonna lie. That was. Oh, I look at the, 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 the. I saved your life, man. You better remember that. Oh, that's real, right. talk, real talk. Real talk. I'll did. take that shit. He backed you up good. Is that yes. one of the highlights of your life right there? Rapping and oh, text- I got to be honest with you. I've been a Danny Brown fan for a really fucking long time. That oh, made yeah. my fucking night right there. there. You that go. made my year. There you go. In exchange for me setting you up for that opportunity, do you promise us all you'll never do stand-up comedy again? I'm, ki- I'm kidding. Fuck that. He can be my hype man now. Nah. Oh, I, shit. I'm you got down. a full-time Sign job. Sign me up. I'm about to go ahead and get cousin John. He about to be my hype man. Now. He fuck with me. Fuck y'all. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep this thing moving along. That's Chad J. Thank you all so there much. I appreciate it. We're having fun here tonight. We're going to do it. This is a very special moment right here, ladies and gentlemen. You're at a very special episode at a very special time. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we saw a comedian for his only his second time ever on the show. And I decided to make this man basically a new backup regular. When David Lucas isn't here, this is the new regular. Ladies and gentlemen, this is his first time as a regular on the show. This is Ellis H, everybody. The regular debut of Ellis H. Yeah! You're a parent in this bitch. Make some noise right now. Woo! 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 Shout out to y'all. Because I can't do that shit. No. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, I'm childish. I'm not playing with a full deck up here. I mean, I sit crisscross applesauce. When I go to HEB, I get buddy bucks. And I just learned the difference between artistic and autistic last week. So, um, <laughs> no, I'm, I bullshit you down. I'm about to get in a fight with a motherfucker. My coworker came up to me. He said, dude, what's wrong? I said, ooh, I'm about to beat this dude ass. He said, him over there? I'm like, yeah. He said, you can't fight that dude. He's autistic. I said, I don't give a fuck how good he can draw. He can still get his ass beat. <laughs> Man, if y'all feeling good, give me a hell, yeah? Hell yeah. Hey, shout out to uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in this bitch, y'all. Shit, man. <laughs> JPEG, Danny Brown. Hey. Bitch pussy smell like a penguin. I would have had that. Where my words at? Let me paint him. No, man. This motherfucker got me in detention in high school, bro. It's crazy. Y'all made me feel that fucking old. Come man. Come on. LSH, everybody. I do believe that was the, uh, the end of his set. Thank you. All right. Welcome back to the show, Ellis. Thank uh, you for having this me, is man. true. You've been a fan of Danny Brown for a while. Dude, I love him, bro. Like, well, my favorite, my absolute favorite is that one train verse, bro. You fucking, that was. Oh, Joey shit. Back even the white people know about agree. it. Look at that. Did you guys hear that? Whoa. People only, people only like that verse because I said a bitch pussy smelled like a penguin. That's crazy. And, how the fuck you make that? And bro? people don't even get it. Oh, they say, like, how did Danny Brown come up with you saying a bitch pussy smelled like a penguin? But I used to go to, like, you know, when you were in, like, whatever, school and shit, you go on school trips and shit, they would take us to the Detroit Zoo, and we would go to this thing called Penguin Area. And once you step down in Penguin Area, shit was a lot different than everything else. You know what I'm saying? So shit. when I grew up and I was able to write rap and shit, I came up with it. Your bitch pussy smell like a penguin. And it was like, how does Denny Brown know what a penguin smells like? But yeah, I went... Uh, Detroit Zoo, it had a thing, an exhibit called Penguin Area. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. A lot of people don't know this. Danny was at the Detroit Zoo because he was in <laughs> one of the exhibitions there. Oh, uh, where... Part two, what I learned, the fishiest pussy is the goodest pussy, man, in some sense. Wait a second. Is this a, <laughs> is this a fact that... The, hold on. Did it's I hear that fact. right? No, the it's fishiest not a... pussy is the best pussy? No, it's not a fact, but I'm saying in, intensive if you want to do crime with it. You want to do crime okay. with it? Yeah. So if you gotta meet, like, if you meet a bitch and her pussy ain't fishy, then you know she ain't got no felonies. <laughs> so if you fuck with a bitch I, and her pussy a little I, fishy, you like. I mean, I fucks with it. Like right. the size I, I, is there. I, I, I can leave. I can leave a couple pounds in her house. We can do some kind of. The pussy is kind of fishy. We gonna do dirt together. Wow. So when you smell a little bit of fishiness, you're like, we might commit a felony. She got felonies. She's been to jail before. Oh, my goodness. Fishy Pushy definitely got felonies. I cannot. Look, everybody's laughing. I can't make it up. I can't wait to see the uh, statistics on this. I think we should. I think we should have 20 girls. Uh, all right. Forget it. And we got to do smell tests? Smell tests. And then you get to you get a print out of their criminal Scratch record and afterwards. Sniff. And we get to like. Oh, I can see. Every pussy pussy. Uh, I do for believe sure. this is a six month probationary period. But no, you're going to hear some shit you don't want to hear. Because then you're going to be like, damn, this bitch is in a convalescent house. She's been molested since like, 12 years old. Wait a second, old. wait a second. Do you wait smell that? that? Danny, do you smell that? I think I smell a 2018 DUI. You're going to hear some shit Which you don't want to hear, man. You, you judging these. And right. then they're going to say you motherfucking. They gonna say you, you you helping out sex trafficking. <laughs> oh, that head shake is spot on, JPEG. You are spot on. Danny Brown is a fucking machine. 
LSH. So tell us about your life, man. It's been a couple weeks since we've seen you. What's been going on in normal life? Man, been working with uh, Gary Fousey somewhere in the house, working with Ben Bankish. You, you have know. to tell the people, but nobody knows who the fuck you're okay, talking uh, about, Ellis. You'd have to describe what uh, you're doing with those people. Okay, Gary Fousey is a podcaster. Ben Bankish is a comedian, and we've just been making skits and shit, bro. It's beautiful. See, so the answer to the question is you've been making skits and shit. Yeah. Okay, perfect. pretty much. That's yeah. very good. Yes, sir. Uh, I love it. What else? Other than making skits, like what have you been doing for fun? Man, roller skating. Roller skating? Are you yeah. serious? I fucking love the roller You see roll bounce? I fuck with it. Oh, hey, yo, hey, hey, man, come on. Bro. Oh, shit. On, Danny high-fived God him on it, damn. too. I'm gay because I like to roller skate. What the fuck, bro? Oh, shit. Damn. damn. Oh, shit. How long you been roller skating for, Ellis? Since I was like 12. So you go to an... All right, all right. Hey, you know what? Play that shit. I don't give a fuck. Shit, I know what's going on here. He freaky. He been yeah, showing yeah. some freaky I'm shit. I'm just like, God damn. <laughs> this is the kind of guy that looks like he skates backwards at the all-male part of the... Uh... Me? No. Oh. Danny? Jesus Christ. Danny. You think I just start roasting you out of nowhere? You defensive little yes, baby. Yes, that's your whole thing. That's no. what you do. No, I wouldn't possibly do that You think you. I can skate backwards? I think you probably could. I think if we put roller skates on you, you would figure it out. That's the, that's the vibe that I get from you. No, I, I think you would move no. your legs in the no, proper way. No, I can't escape it. Am I, I, I doing it? <laughs> I think I'm doing it. No, I was some gangster shit. Since you want to bring it up, we used to go to a motherfucking skate rink every motherfucking Saturday called Skateland back in 1995, and there was some game banging shit hey. going on. So I ain't go to the motherfucking skate rink and shit. put motherfucking skate rinks on. Damn. I went that motherfucker to fight niggas. So every time I went to this, <laughs> all right, all right, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, oh, shit, absolutely. Danny. That's Hell a yeah. real. <laughs> I always like to go when I think there's too much chaos going on. I like to check in with D Madness, and I just heard him say the words, "I don't know what the fuck going on." Because he knew so. that's some real shit. That's what the actual podcast listeners think. I used to thinks, check in my motherfucking case. I kept my shoes on. I used to. D Madness can't see your charismatic shirt and haircut, Danny. Uh, so. It's really just it's just going off the straight pull here. up at the skate ring catching fades with niggas on deck. Oh shit, dude! So a lot of your a lot of your uh, dangerous stuff that you do. No, we talking about shit. I'm set, I was like 13, 14 doing okay. this type of shit. All right, okay, just who going to skate ring, nigga? Once I was like sixteen and like. Okay. Like, All right, Danny. Okay. You know, that's a, you so know, that's a totally different podcast. You know, Danny actually taught me the phrase catching fades. He was the first person to teach me that. Okay. I got a Very new slogan for that. It ain't catching fades no more. It's called getting maxed out. Yeah, you get maxed yeah. out. That yeah. means you want to fight Welcome to another episode of the Urban Dictionary podcast, yeah. everybody. Facts on the set. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, oh, shit. Shit, bro. They got the niggas on the set. Hey. Ellis. Uh, What's your love life like? You roller skating with girls? What's going on out yeah, there? Yeah, with plenty of girls, man. It's pretty, it's just dope. It's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just chilling over here with fucking Danny Brown and shit, bro. Life is fucking complete, bro. Like, oh, this yeah. is Martin Luther King's dream right here, bro. I He's love it. You, you look fantastic. You're dressed hey, like don't... Black Bane tonight. I absolutely love it. Hey, bro. I I'm was telling. born in the dark. Hey, look. Hey, Martin Luther King. Literally. Hey, no, look. Hey. D okay, Madness. I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. I hit I hit one of our <laughs> season ticket holders in the head with a joke book. Sorry about that. On a set. On a set. <laughs> you can keep it. Hell yeah. Ellis, fun times. Congratulations. Another fun minute. Hey, appreciate you, man. Ella, hey, Ellis H. He's y'all. coming. He's coming for everybody's job. We'll see what happens. Back to the bucket we go. We're plowing through it tonight. We're having fun. The fun episode. These guys have to go to their Joe Rogan audition right now. Uh, they're, up, they're, they're both here for the same role. Thank you. little something for the live audience there. Your next comedian's name is Festim QB. Festim QB. All right, here he comes, everybody. You guys still having fun out there? What's going on? Are we in this? Is everything okay? 
One more time for Festum QB. How you doing, guys? <clears throat> Good. Uh, well, I have a question for the President of the United States, Joe Biden. How many more shots until we can openly hate Asians again? <laughs> Guys. One joke and out, took off his shirt, bunch of band-aids, absolutely incredible. This is like if Burt Kreischer had the cancer that he's going to inevitably get one day from eating McDonald's and drinking alcohol continuously. Wow. So that's the bit, bunch of band-aids, and then you do that, and uh, you make fun of America for a second there. Welcome to the show, Festum. Get up to that microphone. What's so? What's your what's your story? Have you been on before? Yeah, truck oh. driver. Remember? Wait, what? How many times? This is second time. Okay, second time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Where are you from? Kosovo, Albania. Okay, the coast of yeah. Albania. Kosovo. Kosovo. Yeah. Kosovo. Absolutely. I, I guess you're high because last time you knew where Kosovo was. So. <laughs> I know what the, I just don't know what the fuck you're saying. I, I, know. <laughs> I know what the fuck Kosovo is. It's right next to Bosnia. Am I correct? That still remains Bosnia, the same. Bosnia Herzegovina. Yes. yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. That's about as much as I'll describe at this very moment. Um, Festum. How long have you been in America? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And how'd you get here? What made that happen? How did that? Was there a Nordic ship that sailed? <laughs> I just flew here. That's how. All right. I flew yes. here. I, I love flew it. here. You have Actually, a very comedic sounding voice. Bosnians right. have a natural comedic cadence, I do believe. Albanians. So, anyway. Wait, what? Uh, Albanians? I'd, I'd like to continue that joke, but if it's okay. No, let him rock it. Let, let him rock his shit. Go ahead. What the fuck is he saying? Shit. Does anybody know what he's saying? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I heard what he said, sorry. man. Let him rock it. Let him rock it. Okay. So, no, the joke just continues like. It took for my father one corona and two shots, and he went uh, C word, Q word, all right, all right, Halakalu word, <laughs> word. I think that's for Jews, so. <laughs> wow. This was Danny Brown that gave him permission to do one more joke. Thank Just a you, reminder Danny. that your host of the show, who he does it knew. every single week, did not ask him to do that joke. That was <laughs> Danny Brown. Uh, he should have knew I set him up for failure, though. I mean, but you, you uh, anyway, uh, Festum. So, what do you do in America? I'm a truck driver. You're a truck driver. Yes. Absolutely, I remember now. You're a fucking right. Bosnian truck driver. Albanian? What? All right. You keep saying Albanian. Is this like a joke? Is this like no, a wacky I'm Albanian. fucking European Why are you saying thing? Bosnian? Isn't that what you said? No, I didn't say that. No. So you're from Albania? Yes. Like Nico Bellet. Jesus fucking Christ. I've never hated a white person this much. I swear to God. Okay, so Festum. Let's yes. talk about it. What's been happening on the roads lately? You're out there driving trucks. You see yeah. anything interesting? Not really. Uh, actually, interesting, yes, the nature. And I'm, I'm in love with nature, so I wrote a song about the climate change. Oh, run it, run and it. Danny, stop telling people what the fuck to do. I will decide if the man that has contributed nothing to the show will get to do his wacky fucking comedy song. I want to hear the song. All now, right, man. let's hear it. Pass him. Go ahead. Oh wow, he's actually communicating with the man. A one, a two, a one, two, three. <laughs> fucking Count Dracula over I, here. I am from Transylvania, Tony. I don't know why you keep saying Albania. Ha 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 ha. Give me more jabs, Biden. <laughs> All right. You ready? You're going to do your fucking wacky song? Here we go. Uh, does, someone, <laughs> like does someone need to come up here with a fucking accordion? I'm down to do no, 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 it. Okay. 
No, you can't help him, Danny. Let him. All right, let, all right. this, let this guy fucking okay. sink or swim. Let's see what it's, happens. So it's for climate change. It goes like this. Okay. I take it in my ass. <laughs> Pills I can't swallow. Okay, all right, I'm gonna stop you there. That was actually it was actually much funnier than I thought it would be. Congratulations. I want to hit a rest, man. <laughs> I love That's it. uh climate change, so I I take it. it in my ass. <laughs> Danny's already got it memorized, which is incredible <laughs> for the state of mind that he's in right now. I'm about to steal that shit. It's gonna be my <laughs> new single. I love it. Festum, you have a wife or something? Am I right? Do I remember this? No, no, no. no. no I lied. Girlfriend? I like no, nothing. No, nothing. Oh, you say that like you're not interested at all. Not in really, because I'm writing some books, and I just need time for myself. So. You're obsessed with comedy, then. You're just yeah. writing jokes. You're off yes. the sex. You don't Absolutely. Ever, you don't ever get attracted to anybody? You don't ever see a pretty no, girl no, no, and want to no, no, talk to her? That's for children, so... That's for children. Let me ask you this. What's for adults? What is adult shit to you? I don't know, man. Come on, think about it for a second. Going, up, going up to a pretty girl is okay. for children. Yes. So what's for adults? Did you hear the lady before, like, children, what they do, so? Remember? I bet you're killing in Albania <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's like, there's <laughs> Albanians like, <laughs> new favorite comedian! Oh my God, Festum, do you have merch for sale? I'm interested in buying a Festum t-shirt. I really love how you always change where you're from. <laughs> you fuck. I take it in the yes. <laughs> there he goes, Festum QB. We're going to keep it moving. Did you get a joke book last time you were on Festum? You got a big one last time? No, you gave me a small one. I want a big one. What did you get last time? Huh? What did you get last time? You, you gave me a small book. Man, he had to take an ass joke. Give him a big book. All right, big book. just because Danny it? Brown says so, and I'm a real mark for Danny Brown. I take it in the yes. <laughs> You're going to notice there's going to be an uptick in Danny Brown's Spotify's from white people driving back to Abilene tonight. A lot of people in this crowd are going to be like, let's listen to that guy's music. I wonder what that's about. All right, pulled another name out. Make some noise for Kelly Berger, everyone. Here we go. Kelly Berger. We're having fun here. How many of you guys like it when comedians do good on this show? Yo, How yo. many of you like it when comedians do bad? All right, here he is, Kelly Berger. Yo, terrible. Hey there, Vulcan. Are you guys ready for some badass comedy? Yep, that's good, because I break all the rules. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're mostly rules of how to hold down a conversation. Yeah, you see, guys, I was born with the autism. And let me tell you guys something. Women really love it when you tell them you're autistic, because it makes them feel very, very good about being a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's an original one. <laughs> yeah, you guys also watch a lot of porn. Smooth transition. <laughs> guys, by round of applause, who here ever picks up their phone just like goes like, oh shit, there's still porn on here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Happens to me a lot at Perkins. <laughs> one day I was like, checking the one, I was like, God damn, the weather's looking pretty good. All in the upper teens. <laughs> That's where we're going to end it. There you go. Kelly Berger. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you. This is your first time. I would remember you if someone that looked like they turned into a superhero at night came on to the show before. <laughs> Real fucking, uh, real vibes you are. You're like, the, if the two Mythbusters guy made a baby, uh, it would be you. Welcome to the show, Kelly Berger. How, Thank you. Very funny, man. You have good timing, beats, execution. It all worked out. How long have you been doing stand-up? About eight years. Eight years. There you go. I could, I could hear it. Only in the first few seconds. I'm like, this guy, is, is, he's a real comedian. Are you really autistic? That's the way I act. Yeah, do you have, like... <laughs> What's, is there any cool sides to your autism? Like, do you have any special skills with that or anything? Like, you good at math or something? 
I got the same kind as Elon Musk. Okay, so what do you do with it? Make rockets and shit? Yeah, what does that mean? Focus on what I'm doing right now. Oh, you apply it all to stand-up comedy. Yep, and it's cost me a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now, what do you do for money? How do you survive? Well, right now I'm in between jobs, so right now I'm just fucking around. What? You just sounded like Festum QB for a second, and I yep, lost I, everything. I just moved into Austin. Okay, from where? Minneapolis. Wow, all right. Yep. Look at that smattering of applause for Minneapolis. Just one other escapee is here. Uh, I, what did you do in Minneapolis? I worked in a warehouse. Okay, what did you do in the warehouse? I f- well, operated a forklift, and I hauled out junk mail. You hauled out junk mail with a forklift. Yep. Is that they, what you just said? Dun, 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 play the shit. Pays the bills. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so Kelly Burger. Um, that's your real name, Kelly Burger? Yep. I get more veggie burger vibes from you. Uh, <laughs> when's the last time you were with a woman? Right now my relationship with them is the same relationship I have with my car. Yeah? What's that? It's you see, keep running. You need, cue, you, mean, you need me to cue you up for it. The yeah, parts, run it, run it. Yeah, the parts I know best are the parts that break down. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow. So when's the last God time you damn. were with a woman, Kelly Berger? Let's see. Since it's been legal. Okay. Kelly, when's the last time you were with a woman? There's an, a- a- there's an answer to this. It could be months, it could be years. You could give any ballpark of any type of thing. Have you ever been with a woman? No. Really? Okay. See, so you're a virgin. It's okay if you are. We've seen this the many times one. before on the show. There's no reason to be shy now. You're a, you're a guest on a podcast at this he's point. He's lying, Kelly. man. He's just saying shit to be. You lying, dude. You really a virgin for real? That nigga has some pussy before. I know. Oh, you you never. Don't... You never even nothing. Oh he shit. How old are you? We're t- he has a pussy before. How old are you? Thirty four. You're thirty. What in the fuck is going on, dude? <laughs> Kelly. Le- no, I'm dead ass serious. Listen, I'm not, I don't even know. No, listen, I'm not a, I'm listen, not a comedian, dude. I'm not. This is, this is, we this just is left. We genuine watched fucking, concern. Listen, the, only, the riots aren't what the only What the fuck is going on? Why are you 34 and you've never had any sex, ever? I'll, I'll tell you, because in Minneapolis, the riots aren't the only thing that's wrong with Minneapolis. What the fuck? Yeah. Wow, school no, 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 galore right now. Let me ask you this, Kelly Berger. Have you ever gone to a strip club with two famous rappers on a Monday night before? Because the yellow rose and the red rose has a table. All right. Definitely the red rose with this crew that we're rolling with tonight. No, y'all got us fucked up. We're not going to the yellow rose to hear fucking pour some sugar on I me. I know. Um, Have you ever been to a strip club before, Kelly Berger? Yes. Okay, what did you do there? What I'm doing right now. A bunch of mathematics. <laughs> a bunch of verbal warfare. Trying to crack the code of the vagina. <laughs> trying to figure out how to manipulate so that I can find myself some of the good old penguin pussy I've heard so much about. <laughs> I will figure out how to make this one love me. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! What do you do at uh, What do you do at the strip club? Judge the DJ? <laughs> Wipe the pole down. Kelly, I'm just kidding. I like you. What do you like to do for fun? Let's see. I like to read a lot and walk around and ponder Ooh. our existence. Hold on. Murder, Hold on. motherfuckers! This is a serial killer in like the place. Read a lot, walk around, and what was the third thing? Murder, motherfuckers! Hold on! Hold on, Daniel! Hold on! <laughs> Hold on. Kelly might be the only murderer that we've had up here tonight, by the way. The m- mixer and master, I think, was bluffing. I don't think he's ever committed a crime before. Kelly's no, I can pay that nigga. He gonna max my shit, nigga, what? 
Yo, how does that history shit work? Danny, the microphone's in front of your mouth right now. Uh, I know sometimes you lose track of when other people can hear uh, you. Oh, okay. Mixer and Master Cuz, hit me up on Instagram. I, I'm down with, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will hit you, you know what I'm saying? There you I, go. I need some shit. I do need some shit. Mix okay. the Master. All right. Kelly. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, so what else do you do for fun? Like, what's a wild thing about you that would surprise us? Reading and walking, that's not really groundbreaking uh, here. All right. Come on, answer it for me. There must be something wild that you're into that you like to do every once in a while. Maybe it's once every couple weeks, every month. You do this one thing, something? Yeah, I'm, I have a very severe case of autism. It's tight, laser-tight focus. Okay. Right now, you're having a Table moment right, all right, all right. You don't have mic. any guns on you, do you, uh, Kelly? I do play video game. Oh, he's pointing oh, to his guns. Okay. Oh, God. I looked away for a second. The crowd responded, and that was uh, that's <laughs> my life guns. flashes in front of my eyes. <laughs> this is a concealed carry state. Even literally retards can... Part two, why is y'all yelling that much for me giving my mic up? Like, what the fuck? All right. Hold on. That's not how giving your microphone away works, Danny. You don't take the host mic. Here, I'll sit that there. Uh, do you play a lot of video games? Some. What's your favorite video game? Pokemon. What, what's, what's the most Pokemon. autistic thing about you? I think video games is the most boring conversation that one could have on a live podcast. Let's see. I was diagnosed the same day as the Oklahoma City bombing. You were diagnosed with autism the same day that the Oklahoma City bombing Maybe. happened. Yep. Wow. I love it. This is incredible. This is uh, just absolutely, absolutely shocking. Uh, Kelly, I like your style, though. You have a beautiful blonde hair. You have the Hitler haircut that only a blonde guy could get away with. If a, if a brunette had that, if a guy with brown hair had that, you'd be like, that guy looks like Hitler. But instead... Oh, shit. You look like the little German boy that just loved Hitler. All right, Kelly Berger. Well, we're going to give you a big joke book so that you don't shoot the place up next week. We're going to keep it moving here. Eight years, though. Very funny jokes. Come on, people. Make some noise for Kelly Berger. You guys think we should go to this bucket one more time, huh? Should I go to the bucket one more time, or should we? Okay. Jesus, people. I know. It's exhausting listening to autistic people live their dreams. It is, aut- it is exhausting. All right. Your final bucket pool of the night goes by the name of Sam Kuiper. Sam Kuiper. Uh, One more time for Sam Kuiper, everybody. Oh, shit. Hey. Just enjoy yourself. Happy New Year's to pretty bitches and taco trucks. You know what I'm saying? That's my two favorite things right now. Anybody else like taco trucks or pretty bitches? Hell yeah, you damn right. I decided I'm not doing a New Year's resolution this year. I'm tired of being disappointed, you know? I've been disappointed my whole life. Uh, my dad left for cigarettes 20 years ago. And he never came back. It's sad, right? I'm still waiting on those fucking cigarettes, Pops. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hate when you ask a kid who their hero is, and they're always like, oh, it's my dad. My dad's my hero. It's like, you ever heard of Superman, you fucking idiot? What is your, <laughs> how's your dad your fucking hero? What's his superpower? Divorce and barbecue? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I love this crowd. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll give a tip real quick for the men. Um, If you ever have to ask a lady if she came, she did not. I promise you, (laughs) she did not come. Your angle of attack, your speed, you fucked it up at the last second. That's what it was. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm Sam Kuiper. Sam Kuiper. It's first time on the show. I would remember if you've been here before. This My is your first per- time. First time, Hell absolutely. Yeah. You have Appreciate a real fucking, you have a real fucking man head on your shoulders. Woo. You know that? You have the head of a man. Uh, Appreciate it. What's your story? Uh, How old I've been are you? Austin, about eight months. Uh, came down for the comedy scene. And, you, ca- uh, you came down from Seattle, Washington. No, no. I was in California, and then the pandemic started, and right. I was like, this West Coast, super close. Hell yeah. That wasn't the place to be, man. 
Not when the pandemic started. It was scary. So I got the fuck out of there, and then I yeah. moved in with my parents, and that wasn't the fucking place to be either. Where so. did your parents live? They were in Dallas. Ah, so it was okay. a short move. Gotcha. Yeah. Now I'm in Austin. I love it. I've been yeah, it's fun. so much fun. You've been in here eight months. What's some of your favorite things about the city? Uh, man, you can do anything you want. They got nature. You can go to live music. You can yep. fucking do comedy. Anything. You can yep. get away from the city. You can go to the city. Yep. Great answer. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I agree. Let's talk about the experience just of a black man. How big is your dick? Hey, JPEG, asking the questions everybody wants to know. Fuck all that bullshit. Let's True. get straight to the Are motherfucking you the one who was singing, point. I take it in the ass. How big <laughs> is that? No, that wasn't me. That was the other that black guy. How big, I is, see how big, is, how big is it? Let's talk. Hold my head. Come here. Hold my head. That's good, man. Seven and a half inches. That's good shit. There you go. You know what that means. That's good shit, man. Seven and a half inches. Congratulations. Appreciate you, bro. I actually measured my shit. You did? Oh, yeah. God. What did you I use? Did. A yardstick? No, no, no. I was a late seven to an early eight. Okay. I d- but you got you to gotta really, like, flesh it out. You know okay. What I'm it, you know All what I'm right. Like, I love it. <laughs> Everybody had to make it, like, like the maximum potential. You get what I'm For saying? For those of you like, that don't know, they use Danny Brown's dick to measure first downs in football. So <laughs> the thing you see those guys holding on the sidelines. I mean, I'm still straight. down there. It, it, it's a little bit past eight. Eight inches? Yeah, hey, nigga, I'm, 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 I'm doing something. How many of you think we should measure Danny Brown's erect penis right now live? And not enough applause for it to happen. Um, okay. And nobody wants to see no 40-year-old dick. All right. I mean, if this motherfucker was 20, if you were like, damn, Danny. I've been wondering what smells like a penguin up here all night. So. He's got that penguin dick. My dick don't smell like no penguin. <laughs> Nigga, I was born in the 90s. That motherfucker smelled like cool water. <laughs> cool water? <laughs> Only real <laughs> niggas from the 90s know that. Oh, I remember cool water. <laughs> My dick well. smelled like Hell cool yeah. water. Remember, on, remember bitch. Curve? I put so much cool water on this dick, <laughs> that motherfucker <laughs> shit don't exist. It, it, the dick just tastes like cool water, man. There you go. I'm pretty sure Danny just admitted that his dick don't work no more. Uh, <laughs> no! Uh, I figured it out. I figured out. I figured out. What's the secret? What's the secret? <laughs> Ashwagandha. <laughs> what is that? One of your? Is that one of your cousins' See, names? You heard Blanca yelling. He knew this some African shit. Ashwagandha so, Jenkins. Absolutely. Yeah. Go All ahead. you need is two Ashwagandhas. They got some shit called maca. Uh huh. Drop two of them makas. Okay. And if you want to get busy, it's some shit on Amazon called Long Jack. Oh, oh shit. Jack. Take see, one of them Long Jacks. So you got... See, a lot of these successful old white Texans here nodding along. I'm putting along. them on okay. game. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maka, Old Jack, so you're taking Cool three? Water, Rhino you're taking 7. Just I, want to, I want to learn how to fuck like a rapper. I'm putting you on the set. <laughs> you're going to take... Three I, I, I took all of those things and uh, it didn't help my dick, but I'm I can't just, stop talking. Um, it's impossible. <laughs> this is African nigga dick shit. This is like three ashwagandhas, two moscas, one long jack, and if you really just want to get extra, take one of them dick honeys that they sell at the gas station. <laughs> just throw that in your tea or your honey. Do your thing! All right, right. okie dokie, and we're back, everybody. Uh, I love it. So, Sam, first of all, my deepest apologies. Put it down. Give it. it, No, no. Danny, breathe. Fuck steroids. Breathe, Danny. You're not in a movie theater right now. Breathe. Motherfuckers. Danny, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because motherfuckers want to take steroids and they want to get muscles and shit. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, fuck muscles. We just need dicks. Welcome to. You get what I'm saying? Martin Luther King Day. I don't (laughs) know. Hell yeah, that's right. Okay, we're going to talk to Sam. No, hold up. No, Danny, we have to talk to Sam. When I moved to Texas, I was 180-something pounds. Okay, what are you now? (laughs) (laughs) That sounds about right. Like, if I was going to guess your weight, that's probably about what I would guess. No, I got back down to... Where is the story going exactly? I got down because... Hold on, do we need some Zannies to calm him down? Yeah. No, I'm telling you. I think you, I heard this in a song once. I think tonight's the night you join the Zannie family. I'm Zanny telling you, family, based on friend. your weight, is how big your dick is. 
Okie dokie. Let's, let, let's put the mics down for a second, all of us, and let's have a moment of silence for Betty White. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, hold on. Danny, for the love of God. At 160, my dick is way bigger. Danny, shut the fuck up for a second. What <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck, man? <laughs> okay, so Sam Kuyper. Hello. Let's talk about it. And what do you do for work? You've been here eight months? Uh, yeah, I do video production and sound design. For, okay. Uh, a, I forgot he was up here. I know you did. I am fully aware that you forgot that he was up here. You also forgot that me, Red Band, and JPEG Mafia were up here. You also forgot that there was a live audience in front of you. About 400 ticket-buying audience members. Some of them flew in for this, some of them drove long drives, but you forgot that too, didn't you, Dan? I am mad at you, though. I am mad at you. Yes, you were just talking about that dick. So, Sam Kuyper. We're back to you. You're doing video production. You've been in Austin eight months, originally from uh, Oakland, California, and here you are. No, not Oakland, but I'll go with it. Okay. Yeah. What part of California then? Uh, I was in LA. I was doing film school and some other shit. Okay. I, I was. Uh, I'm from Alabama originally, but okay. uh, military. What kind of car do you drive? I drive wait, a Jeep wait, Wrangler. Stop. I don't care about the Jeep anymore. You said military background? Yeah, that's what brought me to Cali originally. Then I got out in 2016 and I stayed. What did you say? GI what bill. branch? Navy. Nice. Hell yeah. Fuck Aviation. yeah. What'd you spe- Aviation? Yeah. Wow. So what'd you get to do? So we tracked. We did like, we were tattletales basically, man. We fucking told on, we'd like tell where the missiles were or boats or people or, you know. You, would, you were telling on. We would tell the jets and they'd go fuck them up. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. God damn. I like that. Sometimes we, people say they were in uh, the military and it turns out they were a fucking medic or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? These boring ass heroes that come up here sometimes. <laughs> But you, you're out there fucking sending in the real call, huh? Yeah, man. That's, That's cool. you again. You have the head for that. You have the from the yeah from the neck up. It looks like you could uh, you could call that shot. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, it so what's something crazy that you've uh, blown up with an American jet? Uh, we had we the so there was this like group of army infantry trying to uh, move push forward and they were under attack and they called in for us and then uh, where was this? This was in uh, Afghanistan. I wow! Yeah. So you're really in it. Yeah, we were, I was on the aircraft carrier, so like we would launch from there, and then we'd fly over, and then like you know we're in the planes and shit, so we don't have to. Right. What were you? What were, so what do you do in the plane? You just sort of sit in the back, like yeah. ten, ten four. We're ready. We got these like big radar screens, and like it, it's boring, man. It sounds bunch like of man cooler. stuff. You yeah, guys are just sitting in stuff. the back of the plane, like yeah. Rah, 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 yeah. They're talking to us. It's all like radio, radio comms, yeah. and then you just do like, oh, there's a green blimp. Fucking try here, you know. Okay. <laughs> all right. What's your love life like? Uh, you see, you seem like the kind of guy that uh, probably um, calls in a missile strike every once in a while. You know what I'm saying, Sam yeah. Kuyper? Uh, okay. I just got out of a relationship, actually. Uh, I was dating this girl for like a month and a half, and then she broke up with me because she said I knew what I wanted, which was confusing. <laughs> what? The weird. She's 33, too. I was like, bitch, what are you talking Wait, what about? what did you? she do? She broke up with me. She said, I know what I want. And I was like... Oh, yeah. She wants black dick. Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. I'm and, happy, uh, though. And then what happened? Who, what did she want? Do you know who she's with now? She herself. She said she needed time alone. I don't care. I moved on, man. You know what's funny, though? Uh, the, the girl that gave Hans an HJ, she was at my house the night before, and I kicked her out. She's crazy, that girl. I don't oh, want to I, don't, I don't know who that that's is. True. That's true. I don't true, know who that is. Don't say her name. I won't say it. Don't say her name. I have oh, no idea in that who you guys are talking about. I'll tell you that. She's not, she in a bucket. Why, awesome. why did you kick her uh, out of your house? What did she do? We were on acid and just got a real bad trip. Uh, okay. She started going crazy. And she's here, like, hey, too. When you say going part. crazy, on a scale from zero to Danny Brown, what exactly would you, uh, where would you rank how? She was a little below Danny. I, she, she got hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I got you good on that one. That's not good. Because the fact yeah. that you don't think it's good makes it that much better. That's hilarious. Because he said less than Danny Brown. Oh, less than yeah. it wasn't lit. He could have said Danny Brown. That would have been funny. He said less than Danny Brown. The party so wasn't lit then. 
Because <laughs> she sucked everybody dick. She what he's, what he's saying is he would have kicked you out of the house oh, like yeah, 45 been, minutes ago, been, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Oh, You'd have been I, gone. I'm used to that. I know. <laughs> so used to that. <laughs> what did she do exactly that you kicked her out? She was hungry, so I started making some like rice and some other no, shit. No, that's not Danny Brown's it, shit. Okay. It Danny. wasn't even done cooking yet. She was like, uh, she starts eating it. She's like, it's not even done. I'm like, duh, bitch. I, you're eating it out the fucking pot. What are you talking about? It's yeah, like, but you were on acid, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Don't. So you're making acid. rice in a pot and... She complained that it wasn't done? She started eating it out of the pot. She's it wasn't done being cooked oh, yet. She's she like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, wait, bitch. Wow, that, that is that. incredible. Man, even giving hand jobs to Hans, this bitch will do anything for rice. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is incredible. Hell yeah, shoot him down, baby. Gotta, I like it. You gotta roll. I love it. And that's how we do it. That's a I laugh to get out on. Sam Kuyper, everybody. Come Woo! back, sign up again. Do it again. That was appreciate a str- See, I'm not even doing strong it. minute. The great Sam Kuyper. Hell yeah, appreciate it. All right, here we go. This is the moment <laughs> the people that know what show they're at have been waiting for. Uh, this guy does a brand new 60 seconds every single week. He's a legend on this show. He, like Hans, has been selling out all around the country as of late. Ladies and gentlemen, this is... The longest standing regular in the history of the show. Here with a brand new minute, this is the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. Here he is. Wow, there he is. I was already on edge, and Danny Brown just left, so my anxiety is through the roof right now. (laughs) KFC recently released Beyond Fried Chicken, which is chicken made out of plants. Not to be outdone, Taco Bell released thousands of rats that were held in captivity awaiting their cook date. (laughs) KFC recently released Beyond Fried Chicken, which is fake chicken. Not to be outdone, Eminem started fake beef with a SoundCloud rapper to stay relevant. My pussy's so tight, I use AirPods for double penetration. (laughs) I think watching porn as a teenager gave me an unrealistic expectation of how many handicapped people I would be having sex with. (laughs) If the San Francisco 49ers go to the Super Bowl, it's good to know that win or lose, the fans will continue to loot, shit, steal, kill Asians, and destroy what was once a nice city. That's all I got. Wow. Very good. William Montgomery. Doing it again. Beginning to end. Felt honest. Felt real. Well written. (laughs) Completely executed. 100%. You did it again. How are you, William? And why are you wearing the world's longest orange shirt? I was actually gifted this shirt uh, from a nice man who does a Tennessee vintage store. And yes, it has turned out... uh, Way too long, but I'm under contractual obligation to wear it. So wow, it is indeed look like you were uh, like you're one of those construction barrels. Yeah, it was they... a mistake. It was a mistake. Yeah, I'm under fucking contractual obligation by this motherfucker to wear this thing five times untucked specifically. Uh, so it's kind of bullshit. He specifically said untucked, and I was thinking to myself, what the fuck does that mean? And then I unwrap the shirt, and it keeps fucking going. And I'm wearing this fucking thing, and I look like a fucking clown. But I contractually have to wear it. I'm under contractual obligation to wear this fucking shirt, and I swear to God, I don't really want to. I have an obligation to wear this fucking shirt. And I swear to God, I don't really want to. What do you really want to do? Take it off. What fucking clown is in the fucking audience throwing me off? The set went all right. Now I got some dumbass in there trying to fuck my shit up up here. Please stop. I am on fucking edge right now. I wish I was kidding. I had three fucking Red Bulls up there before the start of this thing. That was a mistake. My chest is killing me right now. (sighs) William, if if given the opportunity, if nobody else was around, what would you do to the guy in the audience that yelled at you? 
I would slowly bend him over a fucking toilet, get one of my fucking guns out, and shoot him right in between the butt cheeks. Right in the fucking asshole. Wow. Just slowly bend him down over the toilet. Say, hey, come into the stall with me. Let's do some drugs. And when he's bending over, just fucking do his butthole open and put my gun in there and start fucking shooting. Wow. How many? I don't give a fuck anymore. Wow. I'm on fucking edge. My chest hurts. No, it's really hurting really bad right now, so... What's hurting? My chest. I had three fucking Red Bulls up there, and it was a giant mistake. Right. And you haven't been doing cardio. You haven't been on your bicycle at all. We've been talking. Uh, I haven't. Right. And you're a little bit concerned about that because you've literally, for the last few weeks, you've been sitting around playing Grand Theft Auto and eating soup. Yeah, I started William making... has a new crock pot that he's yet to really talk about on this show, but he talks about it pretty much continuously offstage. And uh, he makes <laughs> soup. <laughs> Why would you tell these people that? I just lost a bunch of fucking street cred. Holy shit. I had a whole bunch of street cred with everyone, and now I think it's fucking lost. But honestly, I made some wonderful pasta fajoule last night. <laughs> Seriously, it was to die for. I added some lentils. I started adding a bunch of lentils to my soup. I uh, added some extra cups of water because I put so many pasta shells in there. It was to die for. Oh, my God. Absolutely incredible. And this is a real thing. So you have all these things. You're using the crock pot on a daily basis. We're talking about yeah. breakfast soups, lunch soups, dinner soups. Dinner, yes. And I've been having these horrible blowouts, which is... What type of blowout are we talking about? I, I sit on the toilet. I start pushing. It's some delayed spray noise. I don't know how that even fucking really? works. Really? I can't believe you have wet shits when all you eat is soup continuously. This yeah, is I, don't, I don't know either. How would it get solid? I fucking start pushing, and there is a delayed spray noise. I don't even know how that works. There's a spray noise. It a fucking delayed, gets everywhere. A delayed spray. I'm trying... Like, I'll start pushing, and I think it's already coming out. It feels like it's coming out, but it's like this delayed spray noise into the water. Danny Brown, do you know anything about this? Um, I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, well, I'm a nigga. Trust me. That's it. I've, That's it. That's it. No, we got air fryers. I've, I've been, I'm a I've, nigga. I've been thinking it the entire episode. I wasn't going to say That's anything. It. So I like soups and shit. Like niggas ain't really eat no soups. You know what I'm saying? But we got air fryers. You know what I'm saying? So that was like a, I mean, it's a healthier way for a nigga to eat. Cause me, honestly, I've been putting like everything in the air fryer. Like I, I mean, when even... you moved here, you weighed 180 pounds. <laughs> And now I'm 160. Sexy on these bitches. Oh, that is crazy what cocaine and Adderall can do, everybody. That is what... <laughs> I'm, I'm upset about that because I moved here. <laughs> I moved here to stop doing cocaine and Adderall. Right. And Nowhere better to move to get off the drugs than Austin, Texas, everybody. Where no! literally 100% of the people are out here. Shut on the one fuck another. up! Because I met a nice, beautiful woman, oh. and she was able to keep me off the drugs. Mm. And now we're I'm doing good. And now I've been eating bacon and eggs every morning. Wow! You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> shouts out to them Southern bells. You know what I'm saying? Let me hit it. All right, all right. Hold on a second, guys. We're gonna hold oh, on a second. Oh, I had it. Uh, I had my. You, I love were you, my were, bitch. You were about to rap to the Kiss Me background music? No, I was about okay, to hear let's it. do it again. Let's see what happens. Oh, here. I got it. One of the great rappers of the world. Go ahead. Look. Look. I love my bitch. Cause she do my laundry. And when I fuck her, she don't really how me. She just say nigga. You doing some bullshit, and I be like, damn, you right, I'm on some bullshit, but I really love you, you are my loved one, I'm a real nigga, I 
and upon the white girl in Austin. Now I move here and we together forever. I love my bitch. I really love you. I'm sorry if you're embarrassed by this shit, but I swear I really love you. I love my bitch. I love it. I, I, I'm a little bit mad you couldn't rhyme with penguin pussy, but it's okay. Uh, I love it. Uh, Will that was a freestyle. That was a freestyle. I love it. <laughs> My bitch, what? <laughs> she don't like butter. I love it. William, how do you feel about uh, being up here on this stage tonight? I'm very excited, and I will agree with Danny. Uh, my drug use greatly accelerated when I moved here. It turned into a very it dark true. hole. It, got it is true. William hit bottom so fast that he got sober a few months after living here. <laughs> I had to stop Austin's doing it Austin's a great all. place. If you want to quit drugs, come here to hit bottom. <laughs> Don't quit here. It's not true, man. You have it's to not go, true. oh, you're definitely going to find sobriety here in Austin, Texas, Danny. You might not know it yet, but... We're your friends. We are your friends, and we're literally planning your intervention right now. I texted, I texted your girl during the show, and I said we need to get him. (laughs) God damn it! It's rubbing off on me. Uh, William, I uh, I love you so much. You did it again. Love you too. It was fun. William Montgomery, everybody. The great Ryan J. Ebelt drew tonight's episode. Check that out. That's you guys with us. Uh, that's the drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt. How about a hand for my guests tonight, Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia? Check them out. You're going to love it. These guys are killers. I'm so happy that you guys joined me. You guys are rock stars. How about a hand for the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band, everybody? Matt Muling at Mutation on Instagram. The great D Madness there on the bass guitar. And the great Michael Gonzalez, Mike A. Gons 13 on Instagram. Uh, we did it again. Live audience, thank you guys so much. We'll see you again soon. Good night, everybody. Thanks, guys. Keep moving, it's all good.